Hello and welcome. It's Miss Darling in the studio. Today we're going to be working on some neutral clusters and these I've already done up as samples. We won't be doing exactly this today but uh, probably similar to it. And you can see that I used some lined paper in the background. We've got some book page there, some lace, some fabric, a little label, a dictionary label, and some buttons and a bow. And uh, this is very similar to it. And you know I like making companions so I try to always make two that are very similar to each other so that if I use them like in a journal it helps bring more unity to the journal and so I like doing that. So I'm going to set these aside and I've pulled out this sheet here. It has lines on it so it's a little bit of different coloring than the other one but uh, also similar so they'll still be able to be companions with the other group. And then I just randomly pulled out a bunch of book pages bits and pieces I have in my stash, some strips of odds and ends, a little bit of Japanese calligraphy, you know, and then I have these book pages here where I drizzled on some leftover gesso, white gesso, and uh, so it made these rather strange looking globs. Yeah, but just sort of fun to tuck in somewhere, maybe. We'll see. And so let's just get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is, as I did with the other, uh, with the other group, I'm going to make uh, two long verticals and two short ones, or maybe I should throw, make one of them a horizontal shape. And the first thing I'm going to do is rip off this border that my printer always puts there. We don't want the border. And we do want a torn edge for, for all of these. So we'll just go ahead and take some of it away. Won't throw it away, just hold it off to the side in case something is needed. And then we'll work down this side. How's everybody today? Hope you're all well and prospering. My son tested positive for COVID about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and he came through it quite nicely, had a little bit of fever and that was it, and did not spread it to any member of his family, and so we're very happy about that, very grateful. All right. Now, in the other group, I made some that were, came down to about here, and widthwise, about right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and tear these down, and assume that I'm going to make something of a similar size. And then I had a couple short ones. We'll go ahead and that could be one too. Okay, we've got our major background torn up. And let's see what we're gonna do on top. Um, these pages are rather a good length. 
for maybe the next layer. Clusters are a an adventure in layering, collaging layers, and uh, a lot of fun. Obviously, you need to start out with pieces that are a little bit bigger all the way around than, than you need so that you can tear them down without losing your design plan. Okay, so we got those two that could lay in there. And then we did some fabric and lace or just fabric. So let me pull out a couple of my bins here. This has been a real go-to piece that I've used many times. I like it because it's it's a little more it's thicker put it that way. It's thicker and um, makes it easier to see. Some of the lace is so fine it's hardly worth the effort to put on. So I'm just cutting this up randomly. I don't know how I'll use it yet. Okay, you might like adding a little extra of this Japanese calligraphy I have here. I just got through making a very chunky Japanese inspired journal. If you want to see that, I, <coughs> I did a complete flip through of it. Not long ago, you can find it in my playlist. And uh, okay, let's see. Maybe just a couple lines. Maybe I'll save that for one of the shorter ones. And that's what we got here. I'm looking for something now with some contrast. Doesn't do you too much good to put a layer on if you can't see it because there's not enough contrast. Okay, a little map paper here might be useful. Kind of toss into the mix. have some random dyed fabric here that I did some stamping on. That could work. 
anything else. Here's a another piece of fabric. I did some stamping. Oh no, this was printed. I printed printed some imagery off on my computer Do we want to do that? Well, that kind of picks up some of that tone there, so maybe we'll do that there, and maybe this over here. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot about this. Something like that could maybe... Alright, let's get one done up and then we'll see where we go with the second one. So, okay.
this piece of fabric is going to add quite a bit of drama to the whole cluster. And we like drama. Alright, I like this a lot. I might just leave it the way it is. We'll see. I think I like the focal point. Yeah, okay. Now that could be used, it's long enough, it could be used to, you know, maybe be a side tuck on a, on a journal page. You could, um, you know, glue it down that side. Probably better than this side because it's a little more ragged over here. And, uh, yeah, and then tuck other things behind it. And really dress up a page very quickly with something like that. So, yeah, very happy with this. That's a keeper. And now let's take a look at this other one. Okay, maybe switch it up. Put the I guess I need the contrast of that lighter page down. Put that down as layer one. This then is layer two. These are very abstract, so I don't want to leave in a representational image. We're going to cover that over for that reason. OK, 
Okay, we're going to do this as layer three. How many layers you do is completely up to you and will be different for every cluster you do because you let the design that you're working with dictate how many layers are needed. This is still, we're on level three, so this is still, it's a different piece, but it's still layer three. Not much of that's really going to even show, but it's there. We like having it there. Okay. We're going to gather that up a little bit and scrunch it in and kind of, you know, just don't lay it down totally flat. Just gather it a little bit. It gives a little extra dimension. Okay. We could do a small focal point. Yeah, like that. Try always to put your focal point left or right of center and above or below your vertical center. Okay, so they're quite different, not, not very companion-ish at this point, but we're not done. We will add one more element to it before we are done. Okay, now we're going to do a shorter vertical and, and a horizontal and see where we go. 
Um, we can do something fairly similar with the vertical. When I put text on top of text, I try to get something that's much uh, smaller or much larger. And I think we'll put a, some kind of a frame around it. Okay, so we could do something like that. And then that leaves it wide open for whatever finishing touches we decide to put on. positioned right where I want and then we'll just glue that down piece of it.
when, when you have some fabric that you've ripped some while ago, it doesn't really take long for one or the other sides to start to curl under. So I like to take the time to pull it back out so I get the frayed edges and not, you know, something curled under. Okay, I'm going to leave this as it is for now because we'll be coming back with the final touches later. And what did I do with the other ones? Oh, here they are. Okay. So now a short vertical. Let's maybe start out with something a little different. This time around, we're going to start with our little piece of fabric here. You know, just play around and, you know, if you do something and it, you don't like it, just collage over it or, you know, there, you're, you're never stuck with having to use what you make. There's always... always thing you, you can do to turn a situation around just keep keep doing it until you see something you're happy with now in this case I'm gonna leave that straight cut line there I kinda like that I don't have a problem with mixing straight cuts with torn cuts. Just depends on the design. Okay. Now, just as I did with this one, I'm going to stop at this point. I believe, unless I decide to put a little of this on. 
since I have a little of that there. Um, yeah, I think we'll do something like that. And then put the finishing touches on after this. Now you're probably are wondering what I mean by the finishing touches. And so let me explain. I bought a whole bunch of natural colored and black brown buttons lately and so I'm in a button mood these days and as you can see with the samples I showed you earlier the finishing touches were done with buttons so I'll bring them out again so you take note of that okay so we're going to use some buttons on these as well to well, I think I should make the other vertical one just so I have two verticals and the horizontal so let's quickly do that what did I do with my leftover paper Where are you hiding? Mm. Here it is. Okay. Not really happy with that shape, so now I'm happy. Okay, we can use some of this again. This time maybe some lace. Got some cheesecloth here. Maybe we could try some of this. This is coffee dyed cheesecloth. I dyed it some while ago and it's just sitting here not being used at all so let's cut off a piece of this see where that takes us I think we should have a lighter, something a little lighter back there.
So here's, this will be layer one. This will be layer two. This is real vintage book paper and I have colorized it with oxide ink and then the gesso on top of that and even before that it just is really fragile so it breaks apart quite easily. And I do have to be careful using it. You see how easily that ripped off. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with some Lace on top of that, give us some added texture. You'll notice I'm working a lot with the diagonal. I just flip it over and trim off the excess. Okay. And I think we'll Maybe throw in that at a diagonal. It'll be fun and different. All right, so we have those two and this one. So these are all companions. And then in addition to that, we have these other two large ones. Well, maybe now I ought to add some of the black and white fabric over here just so all of them tie together. Do. 
Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Or maybe I don't want to add it at all. It's going to look too bottom heavy. I don't think I'm going to do that. I, they may still tie together by the time I get completely done with them. So, now it's time to look at the buttons. Let me clean up a little bit here first. I can't be as creative as I want to be if I have too much of a mess in front of me. Are you like that? Or have you even thought about it? All right, let's clean up this. These turn out to be really fun to work with. It was just a bunch of splotches on the paper until I tore them in two and then they became real nice considerations for these for these clusters. Okay, I'll get all this out of the way. And here we are. Okay. So, I have this drawer full of black buttons and I have this one full well there's some colored ones thrown in here too and then this one is predominantly brown tones brown and beige so I'm going to want to add Probably a big one. Maybe that one doesn't have to be so big. Or maybe cluster them down here. Around this low focal point. I may only use one on that one up near that focal point. Now this doesn't have, these don't have a focal point so we're going to give them one with the buttons. You see how easily you can do that. Sometimes it only takes one I think I did a little more design on the front end of, of this group and that's why they're kind of done with just a single. I'm not sure I like that particular one. Let's try black. Yeah, I like that better.
it, I think. I think that's really going to do it for me. So I'm going to let you go and then I'll come back after I've sewed these on. And I am going to hand sew them. And so I'll be back. Now, since all my buttons are dark, I'm going to use a contrasting thread, as you can see, that I, I did here. Because I like having it be very obvious that I sewed this on. And so let me show you a trick. Here I have a button that I'm going to sew right there. And I don't want to have to search around the back for the proper place to put my needle. So I'm going to poke a hole from the top down in the first hole and hold it there and then poke a hole where I want the thread to come up. Ooh, I just jabbed myself. Ah. Okay, so you do have to be careful. All right, so now well, it's easy to find one of the holes, and so I can come right back up and um, try to tie your thread off with maybe at least two knots, two or three knots. You want to try to make your the knot in your thread that that you start with bigger than the hole you're going, you know, you make with the needle. I've got one thread that's... Okay, that's better. Okay, I'm on this side, so now I'm going to go down. more layers you put down the you know the thicker it is you might have a little a little more difficulty getting your needle to go through all the layers okay so this is a two hole button that one was a four hole button and so I'm just going to look for my first hole and that was easy. Come right back up. I like to I like to sew at least twice from one hole to another. And maybe in the case of a two hole button, I'll do it three times. I got some extra thread back there on the back, but and I don't know how that happened, but it's okay. Because this is going to be sewed down. I mean, um, glued down when it's finally used, and so whatever's on the back isn't going to show. Okay, so I went up and down three times. That gives me a nice, thick uh, showing right there of the thread. And so now I'm just going to flip it over and tie everything together. Like I say, I don't know how I managed to come up with so many loops of thread back here. But I'm not going to worry about it. Oops. 
I usually put in two knots on the back and then when I'm all done I flip them over and just to you know make sure that nothing's going to get pulled out I'll put some glue on the back of the you know where the thread is to secure it in place on the back and and not you know just leave it as is so yeah that's the uh, second one and you might have noticed that I changed out the buttons on this one I wanted these to be companions but they weren't companions color wise but I had this kind of um, orangey yellow fabric up there and of course the black and beige bubble fabric on this one but nothing over here so I changed out the brown buttons I had first pulled out to go there and I'm trying to get a little closer with everything to this color there and so that will help tie them together and make them better companions. So I'll be back once again after I'm all done. Okay, I've got everything sewed on but the last one. I'm just going to sew the last one on on camera so you can see how I do it. So what I do is I position it first where I want it and turn the holes where I want it and then I take my threaded needle and I just poke a hole I poke a hole down just so my needle comes through the other side and I pull my needle out and I come to the back side because you always want your knot on the back side and I know exactly where I just push my needle up through the hole I just made and then make sure my buttons where I want it and then go down through one of the other three holes And then to find my hole to come back up, I'm going to just press another hole in from the top. I've got a lot of layers right there, so I need the help of my thimble. Okay, I'm just going to make the hole. Pull your needle back out, and then look on the back, find the hole, and come up from the rear to the front. And now re, you know, make sure everything's fairly tight and now you're ready to go th down through the fourth hole. This is a four hole button. So they're either going to be, in most cases, two holes or four holes. And since this is such a small button, I probably won't do as many uh, layers on this. Usually I like to go around the entire thing twice, but I may just do it one time. Okay, so my my first threading was vertically and now I'm coming back and doing it horizontally. So now I've 
got thread going through each of the four holes twice and that's pretty secure especially because the button is so small so then I'm just going to flip it over and uh, knot it on the back by pushing my needle through all of the threads leaving a loop and then you put your needle through the loop and pull it tight and then I'll do this twice put my needle through all of them pull it through until I get a small loop and then you run your needle through the middle of the loop and pull it tight and you've knotted it off and just cut so you see on this one I have uh, three buttons sewed on and tied off and here's what it looks like on the other side so yeah there you have it so now these two I think make good companions with each other because the colors go from one to the other and back again so it has a nice flow of the same coloring and then these three the two verticals and the horizontal make a nice grouping so you may be asking well how do I know where to put the button and you're gonna to have to let your design speak to you and you do not want more than one focal point so if you're adding something where there is no focal point then I always look you know left of center or right of center above above center and not below center so I'll go left or I'll go right but I don't put it right in the middle and so I chose to go over here because that finished off my asymmetrical balance and here the buttons went above this one went one went above that and this went there and notice that if I feel I already have somewhat of a focal point in my design then I'm going to add my button quite near that focal point because I don't want two focal points and that's what we did here that's what we did here we had a focal point up here so the button goes up there but I'm left of center and over here the focal point was already here yeah there's a bit of one but it's secondary to here and so my buttons are clustered around the main focal point and uh, you know they're overall they are left of center because this is part of the overall grouping okay so I'm real pleased with how these came out I think they'll be really nice companions to the ones that I already did I thought these were fantastic I think I'm loving these even more <laughs> so you know just have fun play around use up your scraps and you know just try different things and uh, you get better with practice so just keep doing it if you're not as pleased right off the bat don't worry about it it may take a little while and some practice but just keep doing it and you'll get better and get a feel for uh, what you're doing and why so I hope this has been not only inspirational for you but I hope that you've learned a lot about design as that is my goal I really don't see other people teaching design they just show you what they're doing and uh, rarely talk about why they're doing what they're doing and so I am trying to take it to the next level a deeper level and teach you some design principles so that you'll be uh, able and confident to do anything you choose to do so that said, give the video a like, leave me a comment, and I hope you're learning, and tell me what you're learning. And I uh, 
really encourage you to, you know, just really enjoy the process and the learning experience. So, that said, this is Miss Darling calling this a wrap. Bye-bye.